Hey everybody, so we've never ever done a tier list before on Belltube, and what a better place I think to start than with the 30 lit RPG series that I've read. I hope this can be a great guide for you guys. I have to be honest, I've never done a tier list before, so this is gonna be really unedited. I don't even know where we're gonna go with it. I hope that it makes it good enough so I can upload it and you guys can enjoy it. But it's a little bit of a test run for me today as well. So there's gonna be a couple of notable examples that aren't on this list. It's only because I haven't read them yet. Something like Defiance of the Fall, haven't read it yet. Obviously I'm not gonna tier rate it. But enough of that, let's get into the actual 30 items. Of course, we gotta do one thing. We gotta roll that intro. Okay, and we are back. Now, what I'm gonna do with this is that I'm gonna share with you the book itself. I'm gonna share with you the author. If it was something that I listened to, I'll share with you the audible narrator or the audio narrator. And I'm also gonna share what year the book was published so you have a general sense of you know, kind of what you're getting into as you think about these different books. All right, let's start with the first one here. And again, I am so unaware of how to do this but we're gonna have some fun. All right, the first book is, this is Dragon Sorcerer Claws Out, and it's by Sean Oswald, narrated by the great Neil Helligers. You're gonna hear me sing his praises a lot here today. This was published in 2023, and you know what? I suppose I should go through the actual tiers first. Let's do that. Told you this was gonna be unedited. All right, top tiers, normally S tier. We're gonna call that Legendary kind of doing a lit RPG theme in these uh, titles. Epic, it's next down tier. That's probably like what you would consider an A tier. Rare, that's gonna be kind of like the B tier, but still very good. Common, not excited, probably what you would consider a C tier. Just okay, in my opinion. Now, a lot of these books, and you're gonna see as we get into the publishing dates, they're from a really long time ago, 12, 13, 14 years ago. So there's a realistic chance I don't remember. The books that I don't remember at all, I'm guessing are probably just, nah, I don't know. I mean, if they've fallen that far out of my mind, they're probably meh. All right, this category is haven't read enough yet. You're gonna find a lot of book ones in here. Now there's a couple of book ones that I'm going to elevate up a little bit because I have faith in it, but there's other couple of books that I really feel like it would be a disservice to you guys for me to rank them because I still think that, you know, I need to listen to it more or read it more to give you, you know, my honest opinion. And lastly, the very, very bottom category on this tier list, as it will be on every subsequent tier list, will always be The Magicians by Lev Grossman. This is the worst category possible, if you guys know me at all, it's my least favorite book I've ever read. There, I just lost 18 viewers, maybe more, maybe some subs, who knows? Let's get into this. All right, so like I was saying, the first one is Dragon Sorcerer, is the series. Book one is called Claws Out by Sean Oswald, narrated by Neil Helligers, and this was published in 2023. <clears throat> Excuse me, almost coughed. See, totally unedited. Now, one of the things I did for this tier list is I didn't pre-plan where anything is going. So we're gonna do this on the fly. Now, I have read kind of like one and a half books of this and I liked it. It's about a dragon who basically assumes human form and goes to an academic type of setting for lit RPG. And he's got this awesome uh, female companion that's with him. That's kind of like his BFF. It's good. Neil Helligers elevates it as he does in all of his narrations. I'm gonna put this one in the rare column because it does have a bit of a unique premise where we have a dragon assuming human form to get power-ups and upgrades and things like that. So let's move on to the second one. The second one is Magic 2.0 is the series. The first book is called Off to Be the Wizard and it's by Scott Meyer. This is narrated by the amazing Luke Daniels and it came out in 2014. Boy, am I mixed on this series. 
The first couple of books are absolutely hilarious. And it might just be because this was, you know, almost 11 years ago now, definitely 10 years ago, that I was so new to the genre that just the whole premise of this was just so novel to me that I didn't have much else to compare it to. Now, <coughs> sorry, lose my breath sometimes. When I go in and I think about Magic 2.0, I just remember it falling off a cliff, like right around about book four or book five to the point that I tapped out. And I don't even know if he's even written any more. So I'm going to put Magic 2.0, I think, in the common. Um, not awful. Definitely kind of a down curve as the series goes. Let's move on. The Grim Guys. Eric Eugland is the author. This is also read by the great Neil Helligers. This came out in 2023. What do I think about the Grimm guys? Well, there's only been one book out so far, but it's still Neil Helligers. It's still Eric Eugland. Yeah, it's got to be here. It's in a rare. And one of the things that I'm not going to do in this tier list is arrange them within each tier, kind of where I like best. I'm going to save those for more like top 10, excuse me, top 10 videos. So Grim Guys is going in rare. The Warhog Paladins. This came out actually very recently in 2023. This is by Jer Patch, and I read it as an ebook for SBFBO. I'm going to put haven't read enough yet. There's some really good elements into this book, but I just, I need more. I can't tell you yes or no yet, really, until I read a, sec a second book. Uh, my voice is just dying today, you guys. And on that fine note, if you'd like to hear my voice die more often, hit that like button. Think about subscribing to the channel. You can get more high quality content like this one. All right, this is going to be just a disaster, you guys. All right, let's get to the next one, Dark Town. This is by Palmer Pickering. Read this this year in 2024 on, on physical book. I'm going to put it also right here. Haven't read enough yet. It's just the first book. It's got enough that it's not going to, you know, into the don't remember, because I do remember. It's definitely not in the magicians category. That would be awful. And uh, I have some hopes for this series. Too early to say. Let's go to Meet Your Maker. Okay. This is written by Jonathan McLean and Seth McDuffie, narrated by Jonathan McLean himself. And this came out in 2024. All right, this is book one of a projected, I believe, five book series could be different. Where do I want to put this? I'm going to put this for right now in rare. I suspect this moves up the list. It, I don't need to read any more to know that it's going to be good. I can tell, but I think I would be doing you guys a disservice saying, oh, this is epic or legendary with just a book one so far. That's where I'm at there. I expect it to move up next time we do it. All right. Dungeon Crawler Carl. Guys, Dungeon Crawler Carl. Don't you think it should probably have its own tier? Okay. So that's, of course, going into Legendary. I love Dungeon Crawler Carl by Matt Dineman, narrated by who I believe to be the best in the business, Jeff Hayes. This came out in 2020, and it's kind of amazing in the sense that this book only came out four years ago, right? And now you cannot, you know, surf BookTube without hearing something about Dungeon Crawler Carl. It's picked up by Trad Publishing now. There's, I think, seven books out. It's just fantastic. It's best in class, Dungeon Crawler Carl in the legendary. All right. Ooh, this is one I bet you a lot of you have not read. This is, this is The Way of the Shaman, and book one is called Survival Quest, by, I'm going to get this wrong, Vasily Mehenenko. Hmm, maybe I got that right. This I read this in ebook and I read this in 2012, right? So when I say to you guys, I've been reading Lit RPG for a really long time, long before most booktubers have had their channels. I'm not kidding. I read this book in 2012. Where does this go? I think. Man, it's been a while, right? I mean, for now, I'm going to put it in Epic. It's definitely an A. It might move up to Legendary. I remember that either Books 5 or Books 6, one of the two, didn't really work for me. But as a whole, it was amazing. Now, again, this might actually suffer a little bit in terms of, well, not suffer, but get a higher score because it made such a 
huge impact on me because again, talking about 2012, very little to compare it to, have not reread it, but for there, for now, it's going to go right there. Okay, this is a really interesting one. This is A Dragon's Wrath is the name of the series, and it is um, called A Virtual Dream is book one by Brent Roth. I read this book in 2015. It's one of the first American lit RPG books that came out, and there's only three. It was really, really good. But I know that the author had some major health issues when he was writing this, and then he basically... And possibly quite literally exited the earth. Uh, we don't know. I don't think anybody knows if he's even alive anymore. But I really like this series quite a bit. I'm going to put it. I'm going to put it in rare. I don't think it's, you know, on the survival quest way of the shaman level. I know it's not on dungeon crawler Carl level, but it's a good rare. All right. What's next here? We've got, ooh, this is a cool one. This is Opening Games is the name of the book. And sorry, Opening Moves is the name of the book. The series is called The Game. And the E in the word game is actually a three. This is by author Cosimo Yap. And it is read by Nick Podell. You'll hear more about him as we go through this list. This came out in 2016. Now, this one for me is really cool because it was really one of the first science fiction lit RPGs that I ever read. And there are only three books in this series, but I really thought they were quite good. The problem is, is that the author, Cosmo Yap, I think decided he didn't want to be an author anymore and bailed on the business. So the series is over, but in terms of ranking this, I'm going to put it in a rare. It's good. I definitely think it's better than common. I don't think it's epic. Books one was pretty epic, but again, this series came out. When was this? When was this one? This one was in again 2016. So a long time ago. All right, let's get into. Oh, all right. You guys ready for some table flips? You guys are gonna start flipping some tables now. This one I have famously said, not a big fan of. I really like the narrator Travis Baldry. I respect the author, Will White, tremendously. He has done stuff in lit RPG, and he's really paved a path for so many authors. Of course, we're talking about Cradle, you guys. Book one is unsold. <sighs> All right. I mean, I'm going to just put it here. <laughs> I'm going to put it here and move on. I don't want to dunk on Cradle that much. I just found for a 12-book series, most of the books were highly uninteresting to me. They just, I don't know, I, I have very little to say on this because I know it is so beloved and I don't want to turn off every viewer, but for me, Cradle just didn't work. Uh, it gets good at book 12. All right, let's move on. We, this is an interesting one. This is one of the first ones that I read as well. And oh, by the way, I should say Cradle came out in 2016. Another 2016 book is The Divine Dungeon is the name of this series. And the first book's called Dungeon Born by Dakota Kraut. And I read this book physically. This is a dungeon-based lit RPG where we have sentient dungeon. So dungeon-based lit RPGs really aren't my thing for the most part you kind of get the opposite. So instead of following a hero, you're following a conscious dungeon who's making monsters and building traps and doing it kind of as the, <coughs> excuse me, doing it kind of as like a DM would. This one for me, hmm, boy, I'm going to put it here, uh, common. It, it, it Just mostly because it's not my jam. You know what? Let's put it here. Let's put it in rare. I think for people who like dungeon core lit RPG, it's gonna it's good enough to go into rare. Let's move on. All right. Ooh, Viridian Gate. So this one is called Cataclysm is Book One, written by James A. Hunter. I read this book on ebook in 2016 as well. Again, this was pretty good stuff. This is a series where there's a bunch of meteors and asteroids coming to hit the Earth and people have to go into a VR world to survive and all the ramifications that happen there. Viridian's Gate. Uh, I'm going to put it also in rare. Uh, it's borderlining on Epic just to kind of give you a sense of it. I liked it quite a bit. I think I'm current on it. I might be one book behind. Let's go to the next one. Oh, okay. So this one is Awaken Online. 
Catharsis is book one. Travis Bagwell is the author. Came out in 2017. This is, I've done both reading physical and listening to the audible by narrator David Stifel. You guys, Awaken Online. Bob, boom! It's going up in Legendary. I love Awaken Online. This follows our main character, Jason, who is essentially, and there's actually two Jasons coming up in this series or in this uh, listing, but yeah, this is a high school guy who gets recruited by a corporation to basically move in with them and play as a necromancer within their VR game. But there's so much more going on. There is political machinations. There's real life murders. There's, you know, just all kinds of crazy world building in Awaken Online. I love it. Absolutely in legendary for me. Next one, Eden's Gate. Book one's called The Reborn by Edward Brody. I read this book. Uh, it starts in 2017. You guys, I don't remember this book at all. Uh, I sort of remember that only a handful of people got to go into this world. And I think our protagonist girlfriend is also in the world. His IRL girlfriend is also in the world, but on the other side of the world. And... For some reason, I think they have to battle, maybe. I could be so dead wrong on this. Put it in the comments if I totally am. Wouldn't be surprised. Let's move on to the next one. All right. This is Chaos Seeds, book one, The Land, written by Aleron Kong. Nine, sorry, not 19. Written in 2015 and narrated by the great Nick Podell. All right. So Aleron is a friend of mine. And when he came out with this book back, you know, in 2015 or so, he sent it to me. It's one of the very first lit RPGs that I've read. I like it. I'm going to put it. You know, I'm going to put it here. It probably belongs in Epic for, I'm going to say, kind of what it's done for the genre. But, you know, one of the common things I think we're going to get into here is that a lot of these books have many, many books in the series, and some are far better than others. This one has kind of a bit of a mixed bag, so I'm going to put it in the rare category. That's Aleron Kong's Chaos Seeds. Hey, Aleron, if you happen to be watching this, what's up? He moved to Portugal. Very cool. All right, let's move on. All right, so this one I wasn't even sure if I was going to put in this video because... It sort of has one foot in lit RPG and one foot more in kind of epic fantasy, traditional fantasy. And I'm talking about the Arcane Ascension series by Andrew Rowe. Came out in 2017. Book one, Sufficiently Advanced Magic. All right, this is read by Nick Podell as well. It's got to go here. This is good stuff for you guys. Academia is what we're talking about here. So... We have our main character, Corn Cadence. He's meeting his group of school friends. They all have different, basically, rune signs etched into them from this magical tower that they have to go through first to get their powers. Highly recommend Andrew Rowe. Really compelling author to me. And Nick Podell is one of the best in the business when it comes to narrating. It's going into epic. All right, let's move on. Blades VR, book one is called Scouts. This is by author Terry Schott. Read this as an ebook in 2017. Sorry, Terry. I like Terry a lot. He's just such a great guy, but I don't remember anything about this book. So it's got to go into the don't remember so meh category. Let's move on. Ooh, there's a lot of books in this one. This is The System Apocalypse by author Tao Wong, read by uh, Nick Podell. Have you heard that name a couple of times already? This is book one's called Life in the North. This is science fiction lit RPG where we, yeah, follow basically our main character who starts on Earth, aliens invade. He ends up all over the galaxy trying to figure out what exactly the system is that's generating all these power-ups and how, you know, basically Earth becomes a dungeon world and all these different species from across the galaxy and the universe come to Earth to fight monsters and get power-ups, things like that. It's really good, um, but there are some clunkers in this series. It's hovering between epic and rare I'm going to say it's rare. It's going to go into this category. It's not consistent enough for me to wind up in epic. Let's move on.
Okay. Now, we are on New Era Online. This is uh, the series name. Book one is called Life Reset by Shamir Kutznitz. And narrated, you might have heard this name before, Jeff Hayes. Of course, from Dungeon Crawler Carl Fame Sound Booth Theater. This came out in 2017, like uh, the system Apocalypse did. <coughs> Excuse me. Forgot to mention that. Anyway. This is a good series. I am a big fan of Life Reset. I am a big fan of just how this series works. We start off with our main character, Oren, is leading a guild in this kind of MMORPG type of a game setting. And his guild, basically on page one, betrays him, kills him after years of building up his character and then deletes his character. And he has to start all over again. So if you've ever played World of Warcraft, if you've ever played any of these big type games that you invest years in, you've got this big guild. It's a huge problem when your entire save file gets deleted. He gets to start over, but the system makes him a goblin. It puts him as the first person who's ever been in a monster class. And all of the base building he has to do to build his village, all the revenge he wants to get on his guild, all the humans and the dwarves and the elves that turned him into a goblin. It's an excellent revenge story. It's completed at six books. Let's put New Era Online, bam, into Epic. I mean, it's a really good story to begin with. Now you add Jeff Hayes to the mix. He elevates everything. It's an epic. All right, where are we? Oh, okay. So where are we here? Did I forget to put this on my chart? I did. Okay, so the next one is going to be The Ritualist is book one. And the series is called The Completionist Chronicles by Dakota Kraut. I don't have it on my list what year this came out. I'm going to guess around 2020-ish. It's very good. I'm putting it in an epic, and I did not listen to this. I read this on ebook. I just loved the ritualist because <clears throat> it came up with a character type called the ritualist that I had not ever read before. And another cool thing is is that there's all these different gods in this world, and he is essentially on the side of an unknown mystery god that has been missing or whatever. I really like this Dakota Kraut is a big name in lit RPG. If you are new to the genre, you'll probably run into a bunch of his stuff. Putting it into Epic, I liked it quite a bit. Now, we talked about tables flipping earlier when I was going over Cradle. This is when the tables flip. This is when the, I don't know. <laughs> it's just, you guys, we're talking about the wandering end. Pirate Abba. All right, so The Wandering End came out in 2018, narrated by Andrea Parsnow. All right, I've said this before, and I say this with all due respect. For those of you that love The Wandering In, I am extremely happy for you. I am glad you found a series to love. I'm glad that you found a series that is so long, it will probably go to the end of time. This series is just so gigantic. I don't have time in my TBR to really read it as much as I want to. Actually, I want to be honest. I don't even really want to read it. That's that's kind of where I'm at. So, oh, I can't put it in the magicians. There's too many people who love wandering in for me to say it's magician level. The best I can do, I feel like the guy on Pawn Stars, right? Best I can do, I haven't read enough yet. I did do book one. Community voted it in. It's just honestly not my jam. I don't know. I was bored with the main character, kind of bored with the side characters. Leave it in the comments. If you flipped a table, leave it in the comments if you totally agree with me. I don't know. I feel like I'm on my own ocean regarding wandering in. Okay, next series, The Good Guys by Eric Uglin. The first book is called One More Last Time, and this is read by the incomparable Neil Helligers. came out in 2018. Where is The Good Guys going for me? Bum, 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 bum. It's going between here and here and here and here and here and here and ba bam it's going into legendary now we have at least 15 or 16 maybe 17 books in the good guys already but 
Man, this is the series that made me just absolutely fall in love with Neil Helligers as a narrator, as a voice actor, because he's more than just a narrator. He brings this story to life. I love the good guys so much that whenever a new book comes out, I drop whatever I'm doing and move right into this series. Now, I said earlier that some of these books, and I used, I believe, System Apocalypse, Life in the North series, um, as an example of... You know, there's so many books and some are going to be hits and some are going to be misses. In all fairness, there are some misses in The Good Guys. Got to be honest, Eric Eugland, sometimes he's on a roll and sometimes it's just kind of not all there. But in totality for me, and again, this is just my tier rankings, your mileage can and probably will vary is a legendary series for me. And right up there with it is... The Bad Guys, also by Eric Eugland, also read by Neil Helligers, performed by Neil Helligers, came out in 2019. We are on about books 13, 14, 15, something like that again. But bam, it's going up into legendary. This, I know, is personal bias. I think most people, when they rank these, are going to put the good guys and the bad guys in the epic. I can't, guys. I love it. It's great. Eric Eugland has my sense of humor. It's going into legendary. All right. Next one, Dakota Kraut. We are back with a series called Full, Mur Full Murder Hobo. And book one's called Something. And I read this book in 2020. All right. It's between here and here. I'd like to think that Dakota Kraut has more up his sleeve because of what he's done up here in, you know, in the Completionist Chronicles. So I'm going to put it here and haven't read enough yet because I remember book one being just okay. Like I would put it in the common, really. You know what? That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put it in the common. I suspect that this series may not be for me. I just, the, I didn't click with the characters as much I, as I've done in other Dakota Kraut books. Plus we needed to fill up some space there. Let's move on. All right. Here's a big one. By the way, if you're getting tons of mouth noises of me in the microphone today, bear with me. I've never done one of these before. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Okay, let's talk about He Who Fights With Monsters by Travis Deverall, a.k.a. Shirtaloon, read by Heath Miller, performed by Heath Miller. This started in 2021. And I cannot believe that this series only started a few years ago because I feel like I've been reading He Who Fights with Monsters forever. They're big books. I just finished book 11. Again, we're kind of running into something that we've talked about a little bit already on. Some books are just really fantastic. They are, boom, up in legendary. And some books are sort of in the common or maybe in the rare category. So what am I going to do? I'm going to put He Who Fights with Monsters for now, in Epic, it might move to Legendary depending on how the next book goes. And I think I might have a little bit of recency bias here because, like I said, I just finished book 11. If it would have knocked my socks off, chances are it would be up here in Legendary. It's, it's like if I could put them halfway through, that's where I would do it. For now, it's going into Epic. I suspect it moves to Legendary as we proceed because, yeah, as I'm looking at it, the Bad Guys is great, too. I can't really say it's substantially better than He Who Fights. I'm leaving it. All right. We're not going to do this forever. Let's talk about The Primal Hunter. This is by Zogarth, Primal Hunter series, read by Travis Baldry, came out in 2022. There's already nine books, you guys. I've only read one, but you know what? I'm putting it for now in rare i suspect this will move into epic or legendary as i go through the series i loved it this does not go into the i haven't read enough yet category because i already know it's something special it's just a matter of saying all right is it rare is it epic is it legendary based on some of the people that are in the bell tube community that know a lot about lit rpg and there's a couple of people dog you're probably watching this this guy dog he could make a list of 100 of these lit rpgs <clears throat> sometimes i gotta remember to take a breath or i run out of air we don't have to worry about me ever being a book narrator anyway primal hunter for right now it's rare 
it's going to wind up moving up. Let's move on. All right. This is the first one. I maybe one of the first ones I ever read. It's come out in 2013. So 11 years ago, almost 12 years ago. This is Alter World by D. Russ. Read this in ebook. And this is going to go meh. Meh. I don't really remember it, but I remember it enough to go meh. Not terrible. Again, it's so early in lit RPG. It's really one of the first ones that even came out at all. I do remember that the author took a real political turn in either book two or book three of this series. And it was a huge, huge turnoff. And I don't remember what the political turn was, but I just don't love it when authors throw in their own politics into the story to the point where it's beyond just, you know, a little you know dab here or there, but they just glom on their own feelings and use the characters as a mechanism to teach us something one way or the other. Not my jam. It's going into the don't remember, so meh. All right, next book, Dungeon in the Clouds by Daniel Weber. Listen to this book this year in 2024, read by Justin Thomas James, another friend of mine. Justin, if you're watching this, hello. He rocked it out. So here's where this is going. Haven't read enough yet. So I've already said that I'm not a big dungeon core guy to begin with. So this is kind of disadvantaged right at the beginning because it's a little bit outside of my preference within the lit RPG genre. However, Justin is a badass voice actor and he does bring the story to life. And the fact that I'm even contemplating reading book two, which I am going to do or I'm going to listen to it, that tells you that for me, who doesn't really dig Dungeon Core books, that's going to do the second book and see where we're at it's going to go into the haven't read enough yet. I may, we'll see. I don't know. You know, I'm looking at this and I'm saying, God, I should really be editing this video because it's a mess, but too bad. So sad. All right, we've got two left. Let's do, let's do this one first. Let's do Delver's LLC, Welcome to Ludos. This is by Blaze Corvin, read by the crazy good Jeff Hayes, best in business, best in class, 2017's Delver's LLC. Boom, common, not excited. Now, Jeff Hayes did a great job with this, and the first book or two were actually pretty cool. And I want to say that I sort of stopped this series right around about book four. Four, I think it just wasn't doing that much for me again it came out in 2017 so this was when a lot of stuff was kind of fomenting at the you know bubbling under the surface for lit RPG so it is a little bit ahead of its time in some fashion but just okay kind of a common item I think that most people would find it to be an enjoyable story it's not bad by any means but I'm gonna say pretty common all right, the last one on the list is something that I've not heard anybody on book two besides myself ever talk about. This is the War Eternus series by Charles Dean. Also, there is a co-author credit uh, to Joshua Swain, read by, you know it, Jeff Hayes in 2018. I really, 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 really liked War Eternus. So here's the problem. I think... Um, there's five books, right? And this is a really cool series. I'm not going to spoil the premise. Just go listen to it. Jeff Hayes kicks ass. But I believe the author, Charles Dean, uh, yeah, Charles Dean decided at book five, he was sort of mentally done with the series and just wrapped it up and that was it. And the ending was very, very flat for me. But I'm not going to judge the entire series based on what I consider not sticking the landing at all. I think that there was plenty of room for this series to go on for a few more books, at least possibly quite a bit longer, but I got to respect the author, right? Because he's decided that, Hey, I don't really want to write these books anymore. So I'm going to wrap it up. Now, if you've read Meet Your Maker, and if your name is Jonathan McLean or Seth McDuffie, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about because that's the actual premise in Meet Your Maker is the author gets kind of tired of writing his own stories. That's what happened here with uh, War Eternus, but it's great. 
just I can't get enough Jeff Hayes, you guys. And I know a lot of you all are starting with, you know, Dungeon Crawler Carl here for your first endeavor in lit RPG. I will absolutely say if Dungeon Crawler Carl is not for you for whatever reason, switch over to Awaken Online because there's less humor, you know, atmosphere to it. There's less humor vibe as a series than Dungeon Crawler Carl. It is quite a bit crunchier in the terms of there's a lot more stat boxes. There's a lot more getting into the math of it all, but you can blast past that pretty quick. But I also will say up here in Legendary, if you are a fan of Dungeon Crawler Carl, do yourself a favor and go pick up on audio the good guys and the bad guys because they're funny as hell. They're just fantastic. And Neil Helligers is so underrated as a narrator. Everybody on BookTube should be talking about him. He's fantastic. The good news is, is none of these series ended up in The Magicians. Shh, here's a little secret I'll tell you for watching all the way to the end of this video. The only book that will ever end up in The Magicians category is the actual magicians. It's that terrible. Okay, this is a lit RPG one. You guys, what did you think of this tier list? Again, this is something so brand new for me to be doing. I hope that you got some value here out of it. I hope that in some sense you understand my passion for lit RPG and why I wanna focus on it more as we get into 2025, as we move through the years. We all know this is, you know, the next quote unquote romanticy out there, right? This is the next huge thing that is going to be hitting the fantasy in terms of a subgenre. And I want us here in the Bell Tube community to be riding the crest of that wave where we are right on top of it and people can come to us here and get all the information that they need to know. Let me know in the comments if you've read any of these, what you thought, if you agree, if you disagree, try to be respectful if you can. Let me know if you have any questions. Chances are, if I don't know, somebody like Doug in the Belltube community will absolutely know and you'll get your questions answered. This has been a total blast, you guys. I gotta do a little bit more of these, I'm having fun. Sorry if I ran out of breath on a couple of occasions. Not going to do a one for the road today other than to say your mileage is always going to vary when you look at these types of tier lists. But of course, we got to do one last thing. Here's your fortune.